Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. Welcome to day three of Asia Pacific Precious Metals Conference. We are about to begin the first session, which is a special session on India in a couple of minutes. May I request all those in the foyer area to kindly come inside before we start the session. Thank you so much. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to day three of the sixth edition of Asia Pacific Precious Metals Conference. Before we start, it's my duty to thank all the sponsors once again. Please bear with me. The Asia Pacific Precious Metals Conference 2023 is organized by the Singapore Bullion Market Association, supported by Enterprise Singapore, supported by Singapore Tourism Board, held in association with the Chinese Gold and Silver Exchange Society, managed by Eventil Global Advisory Private Limited. Title sponsor, ABC Bullion, Knowledge Partner, World Gold Council, Platinum Sponsors, Paxos, Perfect Hexagon, World Platinum Investment Council, Gold Sponsor, Sertalin, Cocktail Dinner Sponsor, Rand Refinery, Cocktail Reception Sponsor, Metlor, Delegate Kit Sponsor, Welcome Be Swiss, Lanya Sponsor, ICBC Standard, Lunch Sponsor, LBME, Logistic Partner, Brings Global Services, Associate Sponsor, TD Securities, AC Precious Metals Refinery Limited, Classic Sponsors, Stonex, MTS Group, DSV, Public Gold, Ashoka Global, Metal Market Asia, YLG Bullion, BR Metals, Silver Bullion, CMA Group, BPI, Integral, Networking Break Sponsor, Sino Platinum Metal, KGI Asia, Women Empowerment Sponsor, Women in PGMs, Information Partner, Metals Focus, Publication Partner, Crucible by SBMA and Bullion World. Ladies and gentlemen, please give all our sponsors, partners and supporting bodies a resounding round of applause. Thank you. We will begin the day three with a special address. This would be on International Financial Services Authority, IFSEA and IIBS, India International Bullion Exchange. To make this special address, may I invite Mr. Kamalesh Sharma, General Manager, IFSCA, to come on stage. Before I invite him, a brief introduction about Mr. Kamlesh Sharma. As I said before, Mr. Kamlesh Sharma is the General Manager and Head of Department of Metals and Commodities, International Financial Services Authority, Gift City, Gandhinagar, Gujarat. He is on deputation from the Reserve Bank of India. Mr. Kamlesh Sharma is heading the department, earlier named as the Department of Precious Metals, IFSEA, presently focusing on regulatory policy framework for building a bullion ecosystem around IIBX in Gift City, IFSC. Mr. Sharma was also jointly heading the Banking Regulator Regulation Division of the IFSEA. At the RBI, Mr. Kamlesh Sharma has worked in the areas of foreign exchange and financial stability. Prior to that, he had worked in diverse roles and organizations in financial services sector and in academia. With this introduction, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together in welcoming Mr. Kamlesh Sharma to deliver his special address. Thank you, Mr. Vatsa, for that introduction. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank SBMA and all the supporters and organizers of uh, APPMC 2023 for providing for a slot for this special session on India. And uh, this is my first APPMC uh, uh, participation and I am delighted to be here and, and to share some of my thoughts about what's happening in India in the area of precious metals. Coming from the IFSCA, I will focus more from the regulatory perspective and that often is one area where sometimes India becomes difficult and we, how we are trying to sort that out and change that perception, that is uh, something which I would want your attention about. And uh, so the presentation, uh, I have made a, 
presentation and I will be rushing through most of the slides because uh, I have the advantage of having with me the MD and CEO of IIBX himself for the details uh, in case you want. But I will be trying to touch upon to give a flavor about the policy intent and objective in general about uh, around IIBX and how India is trying to develop a fresh new precious metals ecosystem starting from this new financial center. So, because it is about India, just, just to remind us that India, with all its complications and challenges, it still remains the fastest growing major economy. And it remains uh, one of those, uh, uh, say, guiding lights for the, for the recovery of the global economy as well. And we talked about demographic dividend. This is just to show that for the coming decades, coming few decades, if not a century, India is going to reap the benefits, the enormous benefits coming from this demographic dividend. Yesterday, Mr. Tamur Bang, uh, Bag was talking about. Uh, so, so this is where the India story is actually getting its strength from. So, as long as India is able to actually ensure that all the graduates, the hordes of young population, of people are coming out of colleges and universities, as long as they are equipped adequately to deal with the changing economic and business scenario, India is going to remain one of the fastest growing leading economies. So I quickly come to India's uh, deep connect with gold in general, gold in particular uh, and otherwise also precious metals and jewelry in particular in general. So India is the second largest uh, gold importing country in the world accounting for 25% of global gold demand. More than 25,000 tons of gold are with the temples, with the households, with other religious institutions above ground. They are just lying as, as the holdings with them. So India often sees this as one of the, one of the avenues that whenever the gold import, import is talked about, India thinks of the export potential because the gems and jewelry sector accounts for a major part of India's exports as well. But then they depend on gold imports and that's where the policy makers start developing some jitters about the current account deficit because the gold import is counted as the import of any other commodities irrespective of its status as, uh, as a financial asset as well. So uh, this is a dimension where the holdings of gold with households and the temple trusts and other such institutions it's always a challenge for the policymakers whether we can bring those holdings or those stocks of gold into the market through monetization or a greater financialization. Reserve Bank of India, like other central banks, has been persistently buying gold. And in fact, IMF rules on gold depository includes India as one of the just four such depositories in the world. So that's where India perhaps should be looking at in terms of leveraging upon its strength. This is just a flavor of the gold demand trends in India. Means it's around 700 to 800 tons of gold, which goes uh, towards jewelry manufacturing and also towards physical investment. And as the consumer tests are changing, we can see that the jewelry demand perhaps may change color, but anyone who knows India will believe that gold and India's connection is never going to fit away. It's no, never going to weaken. So. The, the, the connect or the demand for gold in India is here to stay and grow if, if in coming years as well. Now, as, as I just touched upon, what, what challenges as the policy makers is that while India has taken leaps in terms of, uh, say, it's modernizing its financial system, its stock exchanges, the national stock exchange is one of the leading stock exchanges in derivatives uh, in terms of volumes and some other metrics. And there are other segments of financial markets which have also taken a lot of uh, forward steps and it, they are one of the most advanced uh, uh, markets. But the, the market in gold as a financial asset has not, take, has not kept pace and that's again the reason is rooted more uh, uh, in the cultural diversity, the geographical diversity and the heterogeneity of the country because the vastness, the huge size of the country also presents the complexity and complications in terms of policy making, especially when gold is something which, which cuts across, which uh, the, the, the linkage of the gold, it is not just as a financial asset, but it cuts across various strata of the society. And that's where it becomes a bit more sensitive for the policy makers to tinker with the 
policy related to gold uses for the masses. In fact, to give an example, during the COVID pandemic period, it was gold that came as a savior for the credit system. The credit flow continued because every banker in the hinterlands at the rural branches was very comfortable in lending against gold, if not anything else. So th there was a lot of private credit flow that was possible because of the, the peculiar characteristics of the gold. So now it's being recognized uh, even more increasingly so that uh, even for recycling, even if you want to moderate the demand for import of gold, then also you have to bring forward uh, the, the holdings lying with it. How do you recycle them? How do you focus on refining? And then how do you ensure that you still are in adherence with the global standards. Now the focus of LBMA, everywhere, that, that's where IFSCA and IFSC, I'll just come back to IFSC and IFSC, just to give you a flavor that why now India is better positioned to deal with these things, so as we review our policy and regulatory approaches. So this, this is about the IFSC, it is the first time that India has set up an international financial center within India, and uh, the, the whole idea is about, or the main primary objective is to, in fact, bring back the financial services related business, which is actually centered around India interest, to Indian shores. So it's like onshoring or reshoring the offshore. In fact, uh, sitting and standing in Singapore today, there cannot be any better example than SGX Nifty. The kind of uh, popularity and the kind of volumes, the trading volumes which was being generated by trading in Nifty, that is a national stock exchange uh, uh, index, stock index, in Singapore, that is a global uh, participation through, uh, through SGX. And now, through GIFT, this is being collaborated and under collaboration, Special arrangement, this is going to get back in, uh, in uh, India through GIFT. So it will be from July 3 onwards, it will be GIFT Nifty. So this is how IFSC and I, uh, is posing an opportunity, is offering an opportunity for India mostly and also then for business, for those looking to do business with India, uh, uh, to look at it afresh at least from the policy and regulatory angle. So IFSC, it is the whole spectrum, whole gamut of financial services, banking, capital markets, metals, commodities, insurance, and other activities, including fintech. And we have uh, uh, say got into some uh, interesting uh, innovations in terms of international trade financing services platforms, aircraft leasing, ship leasing. So there are some regulatory innovations which we have tried. This is the first time that ITFS platforms will be conducted under a regulatory environment, already the, the sandbox uh, activities are already on. I will not dwell too much on the, uh, the tax regime because I think going forward it is not the tax uh, uh, treatment that will be the defining, uh, 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 defining factors or, define, or determinant factors for the business interest in India when you, when you look at it because it has to be a long-term thing and taxation anyway, the inter international taxation is, is a subject under discussion at various fora, OECD, etc. So I believe that, of course, at, uh, right at that, as we speak, this is the competitive tax and regulatory regime which has been offered within India to compete with because the idea is to give an opportunity to all those who want to do business with India but find it difficult to deal in the mainland. Then they can locate at IFSC and they can start doing that business and understand India better. So GIFT IFSC actually came into being uh, from 2015 onwards and it was, it was being driven by the sectoral regulators, the Reserve Bank for the banking and non-banking finance companies side. The SEBI, uh, that is the securities market regulator, insurance regulator, pension fund regulator. But only after the establishment of the new regulatory authority as a unified one regulator, the International Financial Services Centers Authority, IFSCA, uh, and once it assumed the powers of these regulators from October 2020, the, the, uh, the development and the progress of the business activity in IFSC has been phenomenal. So IFSC is now vested with the powers of all the domestic uh, financial sector regulators with respect to the financial institutions, financial services and financial products in IFSC. And GIFT IFSC so far is the first and so far the only IFSC, but there can be more IFSCs uh, going forward. So there will be one regulator and across the segments of financial sector, IFSC is the sole regulator. 
because I have been involved with the uh, uh, banking regulation and development at IFSC, I just want to give that this is the kind of uh, rise we have seen after uh, October 2020. In the business parameters, you, you look at the, uh, the, uh, the asset size uh, of the banking sector, you look at the community banking transactions, the employment aspects. So this is the growth uh, which has been witnessed over a period of uh, less than three years. So we're coming to the precious metals ecosystem, what is IFSC's objective? As I touched upon, that it is the gold markets in the mainland India over the years because of the challenges and complications associated with policy making and the various aspects of the socio-economic cultural aspects of gold. So the policy changes could not be effected that swiftly because of the sensitivities associated with it. So with IFSC and IFSCA, there is this opportunity to put a fresh ecosystem in place in IFSC and then try to build on the strengths of the domestic economy through linkages both outward towards the international side as well as to India. So IFSCA in, took the initiative as the developer and regulator for IFSC and it brought together five major institutions, the two largest uh, stock exchanges in India, the National Stock Exchange and BSE, Bombay Stock Exchange the largest commodity exchange in India, the multi-commodity exchange MCX, and the two largest depository institutions in India. These five entities were brought together and they jointly floated the International Bullion Exchange, IIBX, India International Bullion Exchange. I don't need to tell this house what are the benefits of an exchange-led model, but IIBX actually marks a landmark uh, step in terms of uh, developing a fresh new ecosystem in India for precious metals, starting with gold and bullion in general, but it will not stop there. So, just to, just to accommodate with the existing legislative framework, IFSCA actually found a novel way of bullion trading or promoting a bullion trading here. So, because IFS, the IIBX was also seen, in fact, in the beginning to facilitate physical trade, trade in physical spot market in gold. So, and it had to be done through an exchange model. So, a concept of Boolean deposited receipt was uh, introduced and the BDR under the Indian securities laws was considered as a security. So, trading even in physical gold through BDR is now under the ambit of the securities regulations. So, there is a depository institution, IIDIL. India International Depository uh, IFSC Limited and uh, that is where the, uh, the, the, uh, the custody of all BDRs and uh, the record keeping of all BDR movements are there and the vault managers, the vault managers are also linked or impaneled by IIDI and their systems are linked with the depository. So for the first time the vault managers, the vault services have been defined as financial services in India only for IFSC. So rest of the country, you cannot have vault manager services under the ambit of a financial sector regulator. But that is so for IFSC. Similarly, even BDR, it is only for IFSC that you have uh, uh, the BDR defined as a financial uh, security and a financial product. Of course, now we are already working, the concept uh, is already uh, being worked out about linkages of BDR with the domestic uh, equivalent of a receipt. But that's where it's a long way to go, where we have to first come out and strengthen our standards, our, our practices and our processes and systems, especially while dealing with the, with the physical gold. So this is what uh, has been achieved. And in fact, I would like to highlight the fact that IIBX, IIDL systems have recently been able to demonstrate that they can credit the BDRs in less than 15, 20, less than 30 minutes in any case to the beneficiary's account. Once the gold moves in the vaults, the vault manager system are, uh, are, are linked to the uh, depository system and depository is able to, after doing all the checking on the systems, is able to give credit and so that allows them at least on the BDR side multiple settlement cycles in a day. We are looking at, because all business is done in foreign currency, the USD mostly, so we are looking at speeding up and making more efficient the fund settlements part also. We are trying to install some sort of uh, local uh, clearing and settlement within IFSC. So that would provide along with the BDR settlement cycle so that will introduce the kind of efficiency which has been never seen and heard of at least in respect of India.
So what have been the policy changes to support IFSC's objective of uh, creating uh, a precious metals ecosystem, a fresh pre precious metals ecosystem in India? It has, uh, we, it has, uh, IIBX has been set up. IIBX is, uh, the, the trading in BDRs has been en en enabled. And then, for the first time in India, going again because of the sensitivities with gold import, going from the Gold Control Act, Gold Import Control, to imports only through the nominated agencies and, and nominated banks under the consignment model. For the first time, import of gold has been permitted directly by the end users, that is the jewelry manufacturers and bullion dealers, through IIBX. There is a big, big uh, policy change uh, to operationalize IFSC's objective. Then about the vault managers, because of the vast size of the country, so the qualified jewelers, as nominated by the IFSCA across India, wherever they are present, now they are able to import gold directly through IIBX, the LBMA or the UAGD, whatever products are being offered by IIBX can be imported through trading through BDRs, converting BDRs into physical gold, doing the customs process from the free trade zone to the domestic tariff area. So the, now to take care of the uh, say, uh, needs of uh, jewelers scattered around the country, uh, the vault managers and the vaults located in other special economic zones even outside of the gift geography, even outside of the gift Gandhinagar, Gujarat geography, they have been brought under the regulatory ambit of the IFSCA. So the IFSCA may empanel, may register even those vaults. So as you are trading on the BDR on IIBX, the gold can be finally delivered through any of these vaults located say in Chennai, in Mumbai, in Kolkata. So this is where uh, another major policy change has been carried out. Then, uh, at, for the time uh, being, the UAE-SEPA, there's a comprehensive economic partnership agreement with the UAE under which the gold imports from the in, in the form of bullion bar from UAE will be at a 1% lower uh, duty. They also are being now enabled or channeled through IIBX. And IIBX has already demonstrated that because it can take, uh, it can keep track of uh, the imports and the tariff rate quotas, who is using how much. So that is how it is already being seen as a preferred mode for the policy makers because they can monitor the use of the quota better through IIBX. Again, uh, the tax exemption uh, for, uh, the all for all the non-resident entities uh, incurring any long-term capital gains on uh, BDR, the customs process, and significantly now the Reserve Bank in December 2022 has now permitted the resident entities to hedge their gold price risks on IFSC exchanges. So very soon IIBX will be uh, introducing the derivative products also on its platform. These are other uh, regulatory initiatives. I think uh, we just need to understand the fact that as the policy evolves, as we are able to bring in the enabling regulators, we are trying to see if the participation can already be sourced can be obtained or can be enlisted. That is the idea, that is the purpose for last two, two years uh, regulatory uh, policy changes. So what we have tried is that we have tried to enable the remote access on both sides. The qualified jewelers in India, of course, we have allowed them to, uh, to come directly without coming through a trading member or broker. Only uh, their trades will be cleared through a clearing member on the exchange. So they can come as a limited purpose trading member, LPTM for because they will do only buy only anyways. The resident entities in India can do only buy only trades. And on the supply side, the qualified suppliers uh, concept has been brought. Some eligibility norms have been drawn to ensure the best uh, standards uh, from the supply side because we understand the importance of the concerns uh, around uh, the physical trade in gold. So even there we have permitted the direct access that the qualified supplier LPTM or they can come as a client. If they come as a client of a trading member in IFSC, they can do both buy sell and they can do trading both ways. But if they want to come only to sell their gold, they can come directly without involving a trading member and clear, it, uh, clear their trades through a clearing member. To again fast track the operations of IIBX, uh, the existing members or broker members on the two stock exchanges on, in IFSC. NSE and BSE subsidiaries, they were grandfathered as the trading members on IIBX as well. Already now we are in discussions that we will be having some major uh, names 
as steering members first being onboarded on IIBX. We have also enabled uh, the block trade mechanisms. So when I talk of uh, opportunities, uh, that's where I don't need to actually tell because uh, the opportunities are galore in the sense that when this community, uh, or the Boolean precious metals global community, when they think that if India is trying to revamp its systems and processes and they are putting together everything from the stand international standards right from the word go, then I believe that you don't need to do much of the selling as such. But so this is the intention of this uh, slide, uh, this small presentation was to actually convey the fact that India is changing fast and India is, uh, the, the, the policy initiatives are now being helped because of the presence of IFSC and because of one unified regulator. In fact, we are very happy to, uh, uh, to announce or to, to in, fact, in fact inform you that we are glad to have and we are blessed to have in fact WGC uh, India team, they are working very closely with them at every step and that's how we are putting in systems and somehow by de facto, in fact IFSCA is soon becoming a nodal point for all policy related discussions for all things gold and precious metals for India, not just IFSC because we have been uh, uh, involved in those discussions around the responsible sourcing guideline, guidances and the efforts and so it became easy for us to start with those uh, discussions. And uh, that's where, whether it is vaulting, refining, the next part. So I'm not getting into details because you can meet Mr. Ashok Gautam, the MD CEO of IIBX for all these details. The focus, present focus area as I'm talking is that first to get the, the major boys, the big boys, the, the Boolean banks, the foreign and, and even Indian banks branches at IFSC, the IBUs, the IFSC banking units as we call to become uh, trading members, to become more active in terms of, uh, say, trading on IIBX because their mere presence will bring interest that inspires trust because of uh, the, the, the prominent role of uh, banks in the uh, global pr uh, precious metals market. We'll be soon launching the silver and other products. Vaulting capacity is being enhanced. We'll be introducing the gold uh, metal lease uh, in a very primitive bilateral kind of a model. And uh, we'll then even facilitate trading uh, with BDR being lent or given as a collateral. OTC also will be introduced because it's not just IIBX because we understand that uh, the major players also sometimes need the flexibility which is offered only through an OTC this thing. We are already engaged with discussions about even allowing OTC derivative trading uh, in IFSC. And then the last point I just was tempted to say that we are trying to now because the government is asking that how we can promote exports by re uh, encouraging refining activity from India because it's an employment intensive activity and if we can bring in the standards, if uh, we can bring uh, the uh, responsible sourcing norms to be added to the technical norms so far, then we can have India good delivery standards. But till that happens, as that happens, we, will, we are trying to encourage uh, a more organization or formalization of refining activity and in industry in India. We are encouraging uh, most of the refiners to actually get LBM accreditation or other such accreditations so that the output is more acceptable in terms of, so all these exports can be actually facilitated, facilitated through IIBX so that you have a transparent price and the, uh, the whole ecosystem can, uh, can develop around that. This is what I wanted to share during this. Thank you so much everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kamalesh Sharma, General Manager, IFSCA, for giving very briefly what's happening in India. Lots of things. IFSCA is a unified regulator. That's the first point. And like, you know, several interesting facts, figures are there. We will make available all these presentations to you. Uh, and then like, you know, that is there. And uh, we have also the Managing Director and CEO of IIBX with us. Those who are interested can always continue the conversation on engaging with India later with them. Thank you so much. Thank you. We move on.